When looking for the king of podcasts, you're at the wrong channel. Well, excuse me! Looking for good ideas for life? You're far from good hands. Hey, bud, what's your problem? If you think the listener is always right, you're far from the right place. Out of order! Even in the future, nothing works! Hosted by a Northeasterner by birth, but a rebel by choice. Are you threatening me? If you want a host that floats between love and madness, and we know the night is always gonna be here anyway. Thinking of you's working up my appetite, looking forward to a little afternoon delight. Then play on and listen to Crazy Train Radio. All right, guys, uh, listen to the blues riff and B. Watch me for the changes and try and keep up, okay? Warning, creators of this game do understand the subject matter may be offensive to some, but they do honor the families and people that have been affected by these real life tragedies that these individuals have caused. Wanna play a game? Oh yeah! Lover of true crime? Yes, yes, yes. Well, we got an interesting game for you to check out. Wow. With the mashup of influences such as horror movies, collecting cards, and RPGs. What? Led to giving birth to an incredible creation of this game. Killers, the card game. You are all my children now. This game is a collectible trading card game featuring some of the most infamous killers with tidbits of trivia on the back of each card to help you learn some insight to each criminal. Who the hell are you? Let's not forget, during the game, cops will be chasing you and these criminals. I'm a cop, you idiot! However, check out their website listed through all social media today, which can be found under Killers, the card game. Am I on the internet? I want to play a game. How y'all doing? I'm CJ Garden, and you're listening to Crazy Train Radio. Hey folks, it's your least favorite host in a podcast world, Croc, Jonathan Steele. Boy, do we have a good one for you today. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, this up-and-coming country artist is certainly coming out of the saloon door swinging with his thunderous baritone voice that is certainly a wonderful throwback to the days of Johnny Paycheck and Will and Jennings. This next guest wrote songs as country epics that easily outdo some of the biggest names in the game. And let's jump into it and welcome Mr. C.J. Garton. So, Mr. Garton, how the hell are you? And first of all, I should say congratulations on winning week two for the Indie Country Showdown. Oh, thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. I'm well, doing pretty daggum good. The weather's great, and I'm happy to see it happening. Well, I got wet weather today, so. On <laughs> yeah, coast, well, so. It's, it's been rainy, but at least it ain't 30 degrees or 20 degrees anymore right now. Yes, sir. I'll take that. 
So for those who aren't familiar with the Indie Country Showdown, mm -hmm. it's a, it consists of four weeks of intense competition at Center Stage Live at, with 20 rising indie artists from the Nashville region. And winners are chosen by a mix of fan votes and industry professionals. Grand prize is a recording session with Weed of People Music Productions and a single distribution to radio. Did I miss anything here? Uh, no, no. A lot of, lot of great contestants, a lot of good folks, and a really good program, I think, for uh, independent artists. Yeah, it sounds like it's a pretty good deal because I know a lot of independents like yourself. So, what? Absolutely. You... It's uh, for independent people, I think it's all about discovery. It's really hard to be able to uh, get the uh, branding and awareness that you need. So, anytime you can get with somebody who, who has the opportunity to help put you out there, and uh, the more people see you, the more people know you exist, then the more opportunity you can have. I've been on a few different labels in town and i was kind of deemed as being too country for country music when i moved here yeah! hold on there's too country for country and yeah, people exactly. put in boxes people in boxes that <laughs> with music <laughs> the hell i know but uh what but it's okay blue hell? yeah but it's it's been it's been a blessing because i think you you learn a lot on the road and you learn the ropes and things like that so at a certain period of time, I, I believe that, you know, everything has a cycle, you know, music and fashion war. And I believe the uh, traditional side of country and the, the love of what country music's always been in my heart is coming back around. And I really see it, you know, um, capturing a lot of people and a lot of fans attention and wanting them to have that back. You know, they're kind of really fighting for the country. And when you're saying traditional, would you... If I'm wrong, please uh, correct me. Would you be saying something along the lines of, say, a Willie, Whalen, those uh, style Absolutely. of country musicians? Yeah, there's been that run of, I, it's almost like this little mark of like 80s, 90s country almost is what's kind of happening. Of the uh, Willie Nelson, the with the Whalen Jennings, the Keith Whitley's, the Randy Travis, that, you know, that kind of stuff, that early 90s country, even the, you know, even the the bands like Little Texas, things like that, things like that are really popping right now. And uh, folks, you know, are just really loving that old nostalgia, that style, of that sound, and what honest country lyrics to me was. I'm a country writer first and foremost. You know, I was doing that before I knew I could even sing. And so there's there's a, a lyric that that delivers, you know, an honest message to the hardworking man and woman out there in America, the, the American pride, the, the, the situation of, of things that we deal with daily, um, you know, and I believe that people are really struggling to want to hear that again, wanting to find that in their music. Well, you know, what's kind of funny there, CJ, and I was thinking about it which is scary when the two or three working brain cells tend to do that in my head <laughs> in that six inches between ear to ear a lot of space to bounce around there but uh when we're talking the old school country like that the thing that always amazed me is the love of vinyl coming back in recent years absolutely which speaking of which you have one tales of the old west which on cd vinyl and streaming so why did you combine all three well uh for me i've always wanted to do vinyl uh, you know i was sneaking in stealing grandpa's records and getting in trouble and he'd have uh eight tracks and vinyl and cassette and he even had reel to reel uh mm -hmm. and i would sit there and play that stuff and it was a music closet and they had those things stacked up and they'd have recording devices and they played and recorded music as well um but they did more for fun entertainment uh because we catered at the ranch a lot and we'd have big big old events and things like that and they you know so when i was a little bitty i've always just loved music so i'd sneak in there and i'd be listening to marty robbins big iron or something crazy like that or i knew who george morgan was before i knew who Lori morgan was 
and uh you know i i loved the the sound there's a there's a warmth uh that you could feel whenever you're sitting there and you know i, I told myself i was always going to make a vinyl record but for years when i was on a label it was just too expensive to do for you know the type of production they're wanting to do and so uh when i broke off and started my own label in 2019 about three months before 2020 um and I said, I'm going to make this. And me and Joe Spivey, my partner, uh, went up and hit up Sound Kitchen with Jesse Poe. And we attacked that thing and hooked up with Vinyl Lab here in town. And uh, Vinyl Lab now is predominantly known as one of the major manufacturers for, for vinyl. And uh, I, me and the Opry were getting our, our record uh, done at the exact same time during 2020. We were the first records to get pressed there. So we yeah, learned a whole a lot. There. <laughs> Do what now? Yeah, I said you beat me to the punch there. Yeah, I was going to bring that up. Yeah, I did that, but it was awesome. I learned a whole lot, and I made a, a record that, you know, I wanted to try to outdo any record made. You know, hopefully, you know, it had a holographic cover. The back's written in English and in Cherokee by Cherokee Nation Tribes. It's got gold centers. It's crazy. It's got hidden tracks in it. We had all kinds of stuff done. No, no, it was like the uh, old vinyl where they would say with like Black Sabbath where you'd roll it backwards and it was, as the running joke would go, it's devil worshipping and all that fun yeah. stuff. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes, folks, I went with the Little Nicky reference, but. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. I, uh, as a matter of fact, I love Little Nicky. The, the yeah. chicken, the chicken when he's on the, uh, on the rock is my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Popeye's chicken is awesome. Yeah, I had to pull that. I was glad I'm able to pull that reference out. So the deep, the deep south. <laughs> <laughs> Popeye's chicken. No. Oh, <laughs> oh shit! Sure. Going on a tangent there, but you know what but, I'm gonna do? I'm gonna throw in for the hell of it. If Daddy could see right here. Oh, awesome. From a small town I came from nothing With these two hands I sure built something If daddy could see He'd be proud of me A little hard work never hurt no one It's what he'd say when we were growing up We were dirt floor poor But we never went hungry I'd spend my days building hay and sacking groceries at the IGA Scraping to save every penny I had made I finally saved enough for my first 40 It was an 84 step side to door Then I took off chasing my dreams I'm just a boy from Old Creek County I grew up with these woods around me I'm a wild out southern child I'm a hokey Folks would always say I'd never amount to nothing Daddy's belt and mama's loving He made one hell of a man out of me Oh, if Daddy could see, sure be proud of me. Mama always was a gentle one. Off to bed when dinner was done, she took me in and kissed me on my cheek. Daddy's love was a little more stern Nothing was given, everything was earned Kind most of the time Except when he would drink He taught me how to hunt, be a God-fearing man He'd take his fishing every now and then Those are some of my favorite memories Never made 
in college He had a degree in hard work and elbow grease Everything he learned, he handed on down to me I'm just a boy from Cherokee County I grew up with these woods around me I'm a wide out southern child I'm hokey Folks would always say never mount to nothing Daddy's belt and mama's love It made one hell of a man out of me Oh, if Daddy could see me He'd sure be proud of me I got a little place of my own Not too far from Daddy's stone Among the honeysuckle And the white old trees Now we got ourselves a boy on the way I think we're gonna give him your name If daddy can see He'd sure be proud of me J. Garden. So, doing you a little reading on this interweb thing, which is quite scary because we huh. know everything 100% is true. But you did mention it earlier, being a ranch kid. So, what kind, yeah. what did you guys do out there at the ranch? Tried to hide from Grandpa so we didn't have to work, but it didn't work very well. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, we, we did a lot of cattle, raising cattle. Uh, we always had cattle on the ranch growing up. I remember that... Uh, you know, being a little bitty kid, horses, my grandpa used to also do race horses. And so we would train horses and uh, break horses and run cattle. And we had a, a lot of property out there. And so whenever you're, you know, you have that much work to do, everybody does it. It doesn't matter what yeah. age you are. So somebody's doing five, something. Yeah. Being five or six years old, I was always out there helping bell hay or, or you know, riding, working, uh, feeding cattle and I, I remember being a little kid. I hated them cattle. I did. I hated it. But uh, it's funny because as I moved away, I miss that. I miss that atmosphere. I miss, um, you know, waking up and dealing with that. Because we'd have to break ice in the winter. It always it was always something caring for them. And uh, we we go back to the ranch, you know, still and check on the things and do the work around, you know, the holiday seasons and stuff like that. But I never realized it'd be something that I, I do miss that I, you know, just I guess the habit of doing it every day home is where the heart is. Exactly. Uh one of the things I was actually listening to a little while ago before we jumped on here was that when you moved to Nashville, you actually owned a school bus. So what yeah. was the story behind that? Well, I went to the uh tractor auction. I knew I needed something to live in and something to ride around in. I had to haul everything, and I, I didn't have a lot of money. I got out of the Navy, and after well, I gave my grandma, that. oh, thank you so much. I gave my grandma uh, the majority of what I had because uh, my dad's house had burnt down. He had passed away, and then my grandpa, or my that was my grandma was married to my step grandpa, uh, passed away from a heart attack. So there had been a lot of trauma in a little period of time, and uh, my grandmother was kind of in a situation where she needed some funds. And so I took the money that saved it from the military and uh, doing a little bit of work, uh, gave it to her. I left Nashville on 
you know, towards Nashville for eight hundred with about eight hundred dollars in my pocket. And I bought a uh, a school bus from the tractor auction. And we loaded that thing up, rope tag and wagon on the side of it, being funny, and ripped the seats out of the back of it and uh, put in basically like a living room and uh, loaded up all my gear and I hauled tail to Nashville. And next thing you know, it was it was on. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was pretty uh, funny of a story when I uh, heard that. But you've been there, what, 15 years or so, give or take? Yeah, yeah, about give or take. It's been closer to probably about 17 now. Okay. What's the biggest change you've seen since being in town? Oh, boy, everything. I mean, <laughs> when I first moved here to Nashville, uh, the town was like that big city idea, but it was still more of a small town. Too big um, to be small, but too small to be big kind of deal. Yeah, and it, it's so you you had those southern sensibilities and style and slower pace a little bit, and uh, but it was still you know when I moved to town, I I was kind of confused because I went downtown and I heard you know this is home of country music and the country music I grew up listening to was on Grandpa's radio, so I was listening to Vern Gosden and Keith Whitley and Waylon Jennings and you know, uh, Marty Robbins, that kind of stuff. And I come to town and ain't none of that being played. It was all modern, uh, pop country and I don't knock it, but it just wasn't something I really connected with. And, uh, I didn't, I didn't really fit in very well at all. I had to, I had to ease my way into finding people that have been around here quite some time and are legends in the business. And, you know, I met, you know, like Merle Kilgore before he passed and Judy Kilgore and, and Joe Spivey, who's, you know, with Time Jumpers and a lot of those legendary names who, who knew Nashville for what it was. And but very shortly after I was here, a couple of years, it, it kind of did a transition and change. And now Nashville feels a lot like just a big city. Yeah, I've heard that. And it's amazing, not just country music, but it's uh, all genres seem to be come to Nashville to record and do a lot of business down there. Yeah. So the other thing that I wanted to bring up, which I thought was kind of cool, I've seen only pictures of it, but your guitar is custom, but based on the ranch you grew up on. So what was the idea behind that? Well, it's crazy because I uh, went to the NWTF um one year and i met a guy and it said garton originals over the top of his thing that he was doing there at the national model turkey federation for people that don't know what the nwtf is and uh it was all custom woodwork and the woodwork was just absolutely phenomenal come to find out you know you don't get garton you know there's not a lot of gardens around so i was like i might be related to this fella so we got talking and he we were related and he was a distant relative and that lived out in the West Virginia area and went in Oklahoma. And, and the way that story goes is the, the wagon broke down of half the Garton clan and they stayed there. And the others went on to the Oklahoma land run. And uh, that's hence us. And then I got hooked up weirdly enough. When you said that school bus, uh, that thing had gotten uh, towed the first day I moved to Nashville. Cause I parked in a spot that I didn't know I couldn't park at cause I was at Kinko's and they told my, Told my vehicle, so I went into a place and uh, thought they were having a, I guess uh, they were showing this building off or something. And I was like, well, they're doing a little tour here. So I got in line and I lined up. We walked in and all of a sudden it was really quiet. And I walked across the ice where the ice would normally be and had mats on them. And I was sitting there thinking to myself, this ain't no daggum tour. Something's weird here. And then I <laughs> walked in and Yoko Ono and the Black Eyed Peas were standing there. And the John Lennon Songwriters bus was there. And I turned around, looked around, and these people opened the door for me and handed me a bag. And I was talking to this feller next to me, and I said, he's like, you don't know where the hell you're at, do you? I said, I have no idea. He goes, you're, <laughs> you're at the private uh, um, event for the owners of, uh, for NAM. He goes, they all of us own companies. He goes, and this is the private event they host for us. He goes, how are you doing? I'm so-and-so. I don't earn any ball guitar strings. And I'm like, what? So... I ended up meeting the owners of all these companies and I ended up getting 14 sponsors, my guitar, my guitar case, my strings, my, all these sponsors. The first day I was in Nashville. Nice. So, yeah. Great place, so they, right? 
right place, right time. Yeah, yeah, it was. So long story short, I put Garden Originals together and uh and my guitar sponsor that I got the first day I moved here and they made that gorgeous guitar for me. I told them I wanted something that reminded me of home and my heritage, something that you know you just can't pick up anywhere. Nice. Well, what's next? Obviously we got the finals of the contest coming up but what else do you have going on past that looking into the spring uh summer well we obviously always got tour dates um we're always reaching out you know it's being an independent artist that's another tough thing is is trying to you know manage all of it and booking is one of my least favorite things to do <laughs> because but uh, so we're 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 filling our dates up. Uh, we always welcome anybody and anybody that want to entertain having us out. Uh, if we can afford to get out there to do so. Uh, right now we have a couple singles coming out. Uh, there's a, a song off an old album called "The Devil Brought You Roses" that'll be dropping here pretty soon. I think on like the 14th or 15th of March, and then we have another one on the 29th, "Devil," which is on the Tales of the Old West record. Um, and then we got we've got quite a few. Well, we're, kind of planning on doing is dropping songs about every three weeks to a month on spotify and streaming to help increase those numbers and, and give people plenty of content because lord knows we got a lot of music we're just trying to find the right way to deliver it absolutely cj thank you so much for the time good luck with the contest and stay in touch oh man thank you brother for having me You've been blessed and uh y'all be good out there if not be good at it i'm gonna pretend i know what i'm doing I'm going to pretend to be good at this uh, whiskey over here in about 20 minutes or so. <laughs> Absolutely. Tear it up, brother. Right on. Hey there, Friday fans. We know how much you enjoy the movies. Enjoy grabbing your Friday merchandise and interacting with the Friday family, whether it be at conventions or during our particular watch-alongs. Well, when you're looking to get yourself masks, why not check out our friends over at Camp Blood Customs out of New York State and order your specific custom mask from any of the films. All orders are made specifically. Your needs and wants are. Make sure you find Camp Blood Customs on Facebook, Instagram, and all over social media and order yours today. Hi, this is Christina Klebe. You are listening to Crazy Train Radio. Get ready for the ride.